Tab man. You made it. Hey, we're here. Vegas. You Plus, met Alex Hermosi. Yeah, dude. It's been a full day. It's been a full day. What'd you learn? Oh man. I took uh, like pages and pages and pages of notes, and I've distilled. I've distilled my four key takeaways into four quotes that were mm. spoken on the day. And these four quotes are like, they're so good. Like a whole book could be written on each quote, you know, like the quote could either be the title of the book or like the subtitle description of the book, you know, right. I think they're so good. And uh, I think those four quotes alone were worth the entire uh, event. Crazy. And the selfie with Hormozy and Sam, of course. <laughs> so if you tease it further, like out of all of the notes that you wrote that day, which was yesterday, why are those four quotes so powerful? Like what, like what do you hope to use these quotes for? Enjoying life more. Mm -hmm. And... Making more money. Great. Enjoying life more and making more money. And when I say make more money, I mean that make, means make more money for my company, which means my team, which means my community, my friends. So just helping everyone make more money. And then when people hear these quotes, they're probably going to use them to enjoy their life and make more money as well. So, yeah. Killer. Let's do the first quote. First quote is uh, make it as easy as possible to work as hard as possible. I love that one. I love that one. Have you ever listened to the audiobook or read the book called Chop Wood Carry Water? No. It's a really good one. Uh, I love that quote too, Chop Wood Carry Water. Because when you're chopping wood, when all you're doing is chopping wood and carrying water, you know what to do. So you can just chop and 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 chop. And, chop. and then you can carry and carry and carry and carry and carry the water. And you can work hard at it. But a lot of people don't even know what to do. They're just confused. And so they can't work as hard as possible. Or they do know what to do, but they're super distracted. You know, they got their parents knocking at their door. They got their cat and dog walking in. They got their kids crying next to them. They just, they had their breastfeeding. You know, just really distracted and they can't chop and chop and chop and chop the wood and carry and carry and carry because they're getting distracted. So just make it as easy as possible to work as hard as possible. So what are some obstacles that you feel like are in your way before this event to have that laser focused chop wood carry water? So what is the action step for you and how can we learn from that? It's going to lead into one of the other quotes. That's how podcasts flow. Yeah, it leads into one of the other quotes, I, I think. I mean, there are some obvious things people can do, even myself, which, and one of the things we were kind of joking about earlier, which is like the difference between a maker and a manager. Mm -hmm. There's a maker schedule and a manager schedule. And a manager schedule, rightfully so, is full of a bunch of different meetings. Whereas a maker schedule is... No meetings. No Not meetings. Enough. Wide open. And so understanding if you're a manager or a maker and then setting your calendar up accordingly. Because if you're a maker and you got all these meetings and shit, are you really making it as easy as possible for you to work as hard as possible? Mm. No. Because you got these freaking meetings coming in the way, right? Like this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's, that's part of it. Just understanding like what are you supposed to be doing? That's a big one. Yeah, because you can't flow. You can't flow. You know, like, and there's loads of even research into this where it's like, if you are a maker, like whether you're a painter or a coder, or you're writing your book, you're finishing your book. Yep. If you have a, a meeting, even at like 2 p.m. Oh, dude. Your whole day is just like, it revolves around that. Yep. Meeting. 100%. I know what that's like. Thousand percent. Thousand percent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was the first, first key takeaway. But I think uh, one, one other way to make it as easy as possible, to work as hard as possible, is to understand this next quote, or to hear this next quote. Bro, you can interview yourself, this is epic. And the next one is, optimize losing track of time. Like when you optimize for that, 
you're in flow state. And flow state is you working hard, but it doesn't feel like it. You just flow and you're so productive. Hormozzi puts up 350 pieces of content per week. I don't think he feels like he's grinding out 350 pieces of content. He's just flowing, he's maximizing, losing track of time by doing his writing, by doing his tweets, which he said is his highest leverage activity, just tweeting. And then the team does the rest. The team, you know, chops it up, blah, 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 blah does the rest. And I think maximizing losing track of time doesn't just apply to you as a CEO, it applies to like everyone on your team. Everyone on your team ought to be in a position where they're maximizing losing track of time as well. Mm. Then your whole team is just in flow. So. I think you need different people on your team to be on a maker schedule, but you need someone to be on a manager schedule. 100%. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Sam said something interesting yesterday too. He said he found that whenever his team would start slowing down and becoming less productive, it was always when they were working on more than one thing at a time. And so they've got a rule now, which is when someone's working on something, when someone on the team is working on something, nobody else on the team can give them other tasks. Like, no, she's working on that. No, he's working on that. No more tasks. Let them finish that thing. They need to focus on finishing that thing. So, yeah, protecting, protecting your space, protecting your calendar, protecting your time, protecting your focus. That will help maximize losing track of time. What things do you do? That makes you lose track of time. Well, I don't know if you remember, but yesterday I was begging Hormozzi to give us all his book writing process. Because mm-hmm. for me, writing is when I lose track of time. Writing is one of the easiest ways for me to lose track of time. And Hormozzi is like, I don't recommend anyone write a book unless you love it. I'm like, I love it. I love writing. So writing for me is super, super, it's, it's like that, super enjoyable. And like I write... I can write for an hour or two hours, no problem. And then if I don't like what I wrote, I have no problem highlighting it all, deleting it. I'm like, I just spent two hours. It wasn't a waste of time, but I spent two hours doing something I enjoyed. I don't need to hit publish or post. So it was a good use of time. That's me losing track of time. One way. Outside of business? We were playing darts. That was really fun. Hundred dollar bill. Really? Just got into dart throwing yesterday. <laughs> that was, that, I lost track of time. Darts. That's a good one. Oh, it's a form of play, isn't it? Yeah. Play and flow. We're play. Like super connected. Yeah, video games. Yeah, bro. Video when you games. were talking about writing something and then deleting it, I was thinking about my three-year-old building Lego, and then what does she do? Yeah. Knocks it down. Knocks it down. Builds it again. Yeah, do it again. Mm-hmm. When did you first find your flow? in a business context? Like when did business start to feel like play for you? Hmm. Well, school games was a <laughs> game, bro. School games was a big game. When did it start feeling like that? Um, that's a good question. I think when I started getting good at making decent videos that got good views, I was like, well, how can I beat that next time? Mm. And then now when you log onto the YouTube dashboard, it shows you like, how that latest video compares to your past 10. That's right. So that's a game, trying to get one of 10. Every time you upload the video, okay, I'm gonna optimize this title, this thumbnail, my 30 second hook. Let's see how it does, upload. And you wait like a few hours and you're like, ah, oh, I came third, you know? And you try it again, let's go make another video. So that's, that's fun, YouTube gamifies it like that in a really simple way. Something I think you're really good at is you're good at flowing when the record button is on. Hmm. A lot of people at the beginning of their journey, it's not flu. It's like they hit record and it's like. I can be like that when I'm by myself. Tell me more. Oh, dude, I, I so many ideas for a video. Then I hit record. I'm like, I look like shit right now. Or I'll be like, I don't know how to start this video. Or I have this sounds dumb. Let me redo it. And I redo it like 10 times. Like, no, nah, I don't even want to make it anymore. Mm. When, I'm by, when I'm with people like this, like podcast to me, the ultimate hack. I was, uh, I joined a mastermind a while ago, Kirby's mastermind, Andrew Kirby's mastermind, and he told us to find the overlap within your content. And me finding the overlap means find the best performing videos that you enjoyed making. Right. Because the best performing means the audience liked them. And if you can find the ones that they enjoyed the most, that you enjoyed making, that's the overlap. Mm. And so I did, I found it. 
I found the overlap. My best performing videos that were the easiest and most enjoyable to make was this right here. Just flowing with somebody. Yeah. Podcasts. So easy, bro. Because you just show up and flow. Yeah. It's like play. Yeah. You got the best job in the world, dude. I do have the best job in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that, was, uh, that was me finding the overlap. Finding the flow. Third quote. Third quote. Third quote. <sighs> this one's going to be... Uh... Spicy. No, it's going to be worth a lot of money to a lot of people. Hormozzi looked at somebody in the crowd. I won't, name, I won't say who, but he looked at someone in the crowd. And he's like, it's going to take you five years to realize this, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway right now. Talent is everything. Look at school, man. Look who they've got on their team. They've got some heavy hitters. Look at the best companies in the world. They've got some heavy hitters. All the best companies in the world have the heaviest hitters. Company, the word company means a group of people. Mm. You know, so talent is everything. And Hormozzi mentioned how the best talent is already hired. They're already working. Even if they're not hired, they're already working. That's what makes them so good. So he's like, if you're going to find good talent, you've got to go to where they're already working. And he didn't say this word for word, but and he didn't say like you should like pouch them. But essentially, you kind of have to pouch them. And that's what Apple does, what Tesla does, what Microsoft does. They just pouch talent. The way I internalized it was just like, you're never going to find them on a job board. You're never going to find them. Heck no. Those are the worst, bro. Those are the worst. No offense if you're on a job board, but they're usually the worst. You might find a unicorn, 0.001% of people will be decent, but no, they're usually the worst. So how did you go from your entrepreneurial journey being a, a solo game to a team sport? It took too long, that's for sure. It took too long. Uh, because I didn't have any real examples of somebody doing it as a team. I, all my, all my um, mentors and gurus, for the most part, were solopreneurs. And they were glamorizing the solopreneur lifestyle. And the solopreneur lifestyle sounds cool. Like, yeah, man, it's just me and my laptop and my phone and my backpack and I'm making 10 grand a month. And then you get to there and you're like, okay, but like, now what? You're like, I want to make 100 grand. So, okay, but now I gotta take calls. I'm like, well, I don't wanna take calls. But you're a solopreneur, you gotta take your own calls. I'm like, but what if I just hired out a closer? Hey, that worked. Mm. What if I just hire out an appointment setter? Hey, that worked. What if I just hire out like a, a VA to take care of these emails? Hey, that worked. What if I just hire out like some coaches to like take care of the delivery for me? Hey, that worked. <laughs> now I'm no longer a solopreneur, but I'm free. Yeah. Like way more free than I was when I was a solopreneur. You know? And people are like, oh, I don't wanna like manage a big team. Dude, just then hire a manager, you know? Like there's, for everything you don't want to do, there's somebody who would love that as their dream job. Mm -hmm. Like for every task you don't want to do, that's somebody's dream job. Yeah. Who not how? Who not how? Just delegate. Sam says, hire where it hurts. Yeah. I don't do anything. You can ask anyone on my team, does Ted do anything he doesn't want to do? No. I'd never do something I don't want to do. So that's where Dan Sullivan and I align heavily. Shout out to the Canadians. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing Alex said yesterday that kind of really resonated with me was you can hire one, the one person who oh, will hire 10 people. Huge. Yep, our first question I asked him was, how do we build the content team? And his answer was, hire one to hire 10. Hire one to hire 10. And then after the event ended, Benny and I spoke to the videographer and we're like, bro, how do we, how do we build a content team? We just asked the exact same question. And he's like, dude, the, your first hire needs to build up the rest of the team. Right. So make sure that first hire is like, knows how to do everything so that they can delegate out everything to a bigger team. Yeah, it's huge. Talent is everything. Number four, <laughs> this, this goes hand to hand. This goes hand to hand with talent is everything, but also goes hand to hand with just advertising in general, marketing in general, business in general, which is, it's my favorite quote of the whole event. Two words, 
outspend everyone. Think about how powerful that is. You buy up all the advertising space. You buy up all the talent. Amazon was not profitable for like their first 10 years. They had deep oxygen tanks that went underwater for 10 years. And they just outspend everyone. Spotify still isn't profitable. They're just buying up all these artists, all these songs, all these rights. School. I don't think they're profitable yet. But they're outspending everyone, man, and they're crushing. So I think a lot of entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, CEOs, they're like, oh, they're like, like optimizing for a fat bank account. Or they're optimizing for just pure net profit. And one of my favorite questions a friend asked me, he's like, what would happen in your business if you took the entire month's profit and just spent it back on the business? very powerful <laughs> and that's it we're just talking a month yeah Amazon did it for 10 years mm -hmm. most people are not willing to do that so that quote outspend everyone is so powerful mm -hmm. and coming back to the talent is everything it was said that like these people aren't cheap be willing to give them a hefty uh, paycheck mm -hmm. so yeah those are the those are the four Big quotes, man. Super cool. You have them memorized? Like maybe if I go in reverse order. <laughs> you get to try it. I spend everyone. Talent is everything. Uh, maximize the losing track of time. Wow. And then the first one was something along the lines like remove the obstacles that stop you from getting into the work straight away. Make it as. Make it as easy as possible to work as hard as you can. As hard as possible. <laughs> well done. It's a good quiz. You're a proper teacher. Well done, bro. <laughs> yeah, internalize that shit. Definitely. Quotes. Want to see those all around your house? <laughs> Super valuable for anyone listening. Oh, dude. Like I said, books could be written on those. Yeah. And Hormozzi writes books like $100 million leads, $100 million offers. If you wrote a book on each of those, that alone right there is $400 million. I would love a book on talent is everything. Mm -hmm. I would love it like on how to hire and, and build the team. I would love a book on how to outspend everyone. I would love a book on how to maximize for loss of time or losing track of time. I would love a book on how to make it as easy as possible to work as hard as possible. Those would be great books. Sign me up. Do you think for people listening who are like starting their entrepreneurial journey or they're just starting their school community, they can't outspend everyone? No, but they can optimize for reinvestments rather than optimizing for a fat bank account. Something else that Alex said yesterday that I, I really, really loved. He was talking about building an audience and when do you try to monetize your audience? Mm -hmm. And he said, you can never do it too late. Yeah, I love that. He said that yesterday? Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff said yesterday that I just did not hear because it was just so much was coming up. It was like up. eight or nine hours. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one though. You can never not monetize too late. You can never monetize too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you can do it. It's easy to do it too early. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a fact. It was so easy for me to start making sales when I first started trying to make sales because I had, I didn't even know you could make sales for the first four or five years. Yeah. So I was just giving, 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 giving. And I saw people monetizing, like maybe I should try that. <laughs> and it was a lot easier for me because I had spent the first four years, for the first five years, just giving, 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 building a name for myself, building a brand for myself. Mm -hmm. And that brand to this day still pays off. We get people signing up for our program now who've known about me for the past 14 years. Yeah. Because 14 years ago I started building this brand. So, uh, yeah. Was it you or someone else in this house talking earlier about like there's like three levels of entre entrepreneurship and, what, and like the first level is just having a job. Mm -hmm. Just get a job and study the organization, study the company. Mm -hmm. And if you can get a job and make content, you're not stressing now about money from the content. Well, we talk a lot about earn to learn. Earn to learn. The Warren Buffettism. I love that, man. Yeah. Level one, just get a job and study the organization, study the company. Knowing that you're one day going to become, you know, CEO or have your own something similar, you know. Yeah, while you're doing that, like, 
the first 24 months of just trying to figure it out. Just get someone to pay you to do it. Yeah. Heck yeah. What's the second level? Don't know. <laughs> I just remember hearing about the first level. I was like, the first level was pretty good. Well, we guess. Maybe it's like going freelance. Sure. Right? So you're, you don't have to see if you have a paycheck, but you still That's have what to I did. Like, you have to hunt. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I did freelance. And then the third thing's got to be building your own thing. Yeah. Start as a solopreneur. Mm. That's level three, and then 3.5 is CEO. <laughs> so you've been, you've been on school pretty much from the beginning. You're an investor, aren't you? Yeah. How has the school games changed your business? Because you've been on school for a while. You've been using the platform for a while. You're an early adopter and an early investor. But what specifically about the games has made your whole flywheel, your whole asset, your whole business more valuable going forward into the next month? It's too early to tell, but it did prove to me that it was extremely easy to make an extra 50 grand in a month mm -hmm. just by selling 50 people a thousand dollar offer. Mm -hmm. And way more than half the people who paid a thousand bucks a month for the first month would also then pay again for the following month. And the deliverables, it's like a weekly Zoom call and Voxer access. Right. Like that was a huge takeaway for me. I didn't know that was the thing or is it possible? We didn't even know we could sell one. We're like, hey, here's the deal. You get a Zoom, weekly Zoom call and you get a Voxer, you get Voxer access to me, it's a thousand bucks. I was like, let's see if it works. If it works, we're going to go see Hormozy. <laughs> and it, we sold one. We're like, wow, let's just make sure that's not it wasn't a fluke. Let's try again. Sold another one. Maybe we got lucky the first. Let's get another one. Boom, boom, boom. And then yeah, we sold 50 of them. It's crazy. So that was a good insight. Very good insight. And it made me realize like, wow, we hit 50K MRR, like 48K, whatever, MRR in a month. Whereas where my low ticket, it's like 47 bucks a month. It's taken us years to like just get past 10K a month. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, high ticket MRR is so underrated. Mm -hmm. Very few people are doing it. So how that affects our company, if we're going to go back and doing that like hardcore in the future is still yet to be determined we'll see but we know it's doable and if at any point we need to do it again or we want to do it again we can hit 50k mrr in a month mm -hmm. and we were we cruised for a bit like we didn't go as hard as we could that month either because we we're like oh we already made top 10 we're good like let's chill you know so it's like if we wanted to go hard we could probably hit like 100k mrr in a month see in hindsight how much would you have paid for yesterday i paid 10 grand for that if it was like a 10 grand day, knowing what I know now, like if, if I w was disqualified from the school games, I had to pay to get in, knowing what I know now, that was easily worth 10 grand. 15, 20 grand. Oh, I, one of my best insights actually, I have not seen this on Google or watched a YouTube video on this before, but I had this insight while I was taking a, a leak in a urinal halfway through. I get my best ideas when I'm peeing because I'm just like, ah, oh. like, the best ideas just come to me. Bro, it's the flow. It's the flow, dude. So like, I really didn't want to get up to go pee because I didn't want to miss it. So I was just, I was so focused for so many hours. My brain was crammed with stuff. And I went to go take a pee and as I'm peeing, I'm like, I got this great insight. And I realized that there's thinking, there's planning, and there's doing. Three complete different things. Some people are really good at just thinking. Oh, what about this? 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 Some people are really good at planning, meticulous planning, very good planners. Other people are just great at doing, mm -hmm. really good at executing. And so yesterday was a day of thinking. I'm now super excited to take everything I've learned, everything I, I thought about yesterday, and plan. And Sam said something really cool. He said, the job of a CEO is to prioritize. Prioritize tasks and then stick to that priority list. Don't keep changing all the time. Prioritize the tasks and then stick to it. Mm -hmm. And so I realized like, that's like the second step of planning. I was thinking all day yesterday. Now, today and tomorrow and the next week, I'm going to be prioritizing, which is the planning part. And then that third part of implementing, that's going to require a lot of delegation, who, not how. Mm -hmm. But just do, 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 do. And I'm going to make it as easy as possible to work as hard as possible. I'm going to maximize for losing track of time. I'm going to outspend everyone. I'm going to hire the best talent. I'm going to crush. Like, what's that worth? 
for the rest of my life, bro. For the rest of my life, our company's young. We're learning like the gold right now. So that urination insight combined with those quotes and everything we got from the day uh, made the whole trip worth it. Were they allowed to share it with everyone listening? And it's only possible because of school games, dude. 100%. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. <laughs> you catching on, dog. Good to hang with you, Ted. Appreciate your time. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me.